Welcome back, friends, to another weekly video on how to master your money. And today, we're gonna to talk about the difference between GAP and IFRS. I have hesitated to put out a video on this topic because this is an issue that is constantly changing and evolving. So I'm shooting this video on August 5th, 2018, and this information will probably be different a year from now. But I wanted to share my perspective on what's going on right now, because this is one of the most controversial issues in accounting. First, you need to understand what these things are. GAAP and IFRS are accounting standards. GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, which is the accounting framework used in the United States. IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards, which is the accounting framework used in the rest of the world. So what is an accounting standard? They are basically a set of guidelines you need to follow for accounting in your business. It's not laws, but it's really a form of self-regulation where accountants have gotten together and decided what standards they're going to follow. So when we talk about GAAP and IFRS, these are two different accounting standards. So the United States uses one accounting standard and the rest of the world uses a different accounting standard. The example I like to use is Monopoly. Now Monopoly is a board game that most of us have played and like all board games, there's a set of rules. But different people have different interpretations of those rules. The biggest example of this is the space on the game board called free parking. Now, every time I've played Monopoly, everybody has a different idea of what happens when you land on free parking. Some people say nothing happens. Some people say that you get a whole lot of money. Now, <laughs> I personally like the rule where you get a lot of money, but honestly, I don't even know what the actual rules are. So if you know what happens on free parking, leave a comment down below, let me know. This is just like GAP and IFRS. So there's an overall set of rules that everybody agrees with, but in certain circumstances, there's different interpretations of the rules under GAP and IFRS. I don't want to over-dramatize this because for the most part, GAAP and IFRS are already very similar. So the basic accounting fundamentals are the same no matter where you're at around the world. You have the same set of financial statements, the same basic accounting processes. There's just certain circumstances that are significantly different. The biggest difference between GAAP and IFRS is that GAAP is rules-based, whereas IFRS is principles-based. GAAP actually writes out all these different rules that U.S. companies have to follow. IFRS is a little bit different. IFRS focuses on the overall principles and says that your counting just needs to fit underneath these principles, which allows for much more interpretation. On a practical level, this means that GAAP is much longer and more detailed than IFRS. It's a much thicker book. And the reason why GAAP is so detailed is there's been some pretty big accounting scandals in the United States. And every time there's one of these big accounting scandals, they add another rule onto the GAAP rule book to make sure that no misunderstandings happen in the future. One of the biggest differences between GAAP and IFRS that has not been resolved yet is LIFO. LIFO stands for last in, first out, which is a method of valuing your inventory. U.S. companies are allowed to use LIFO, whereas international companies are not allowed to use LIFO. Now, a lot of U.S. companies use LIFO. And the reason they use LIFO is that most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, using LIFO reduces your reported profit, and that reduces your tax liability. We are talking about a lot of money here. Now, no one knows for certain what the impact of this is going to be, but the estimates are if we were to change from LIFO in the U.S., it would generate over $100 billion in tax revenue over the next 10 years. So to show you how complicated this can be, if we're talking about changing LIFO, what we're really talking about is changing the law in the IRS tax code which means the U.S. legislature would have to go up and vote to raise taxes on corporations by over $100 billion. 
So you can see how this presents a challenge. And LIFO is just one major example, but there's many more differences between GAP and IFRS. So let's talk about the benefits. The benefits here are pretty obvious. I mean, we have so many global companies today that if you have different accounting standards in different parts of the world, it just makes things more difficult. Imagine you were going to do a company merger between an American company and an international company, and both companies use different accounting standards. What a headache! I mean, for something as simple as inventory, where you have someone using LIFO and someone using FIFO, you have to figure out the differences before you can merge them together. And that's something we can do. We can figure out those differences, but it just makes things more difficult. So you might be asking yourself, if there's all these benefits, what is so controversial about the US moving from GAAP to IFRS? Well, <laughs> the reason why it's so controversial is that there is so much money involved. And here's the deal. Accounting really matters. The person who controls the rules of business has a lot of power. I'm probably going to get a lot of people mad by sharing this information, but you have to realize that the US is giving up a lot here. Currently, GAAP is determined by the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, and controlled by the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. Now, the SEC is part of the US government that regulates financial markets in the United States. In the convergence of GAAP to IFRS, the SEC is giving up control to an international organization. So who is this international organization? IFRS is run by an entity called the IFRS Foundation. The IFRS Foundation is a nonprofit organization that was founded in Delaware in the United States. Now the IFRS Foundation is funded by donations, and they get a lot of their donations from US companies. You can download the annual report from the IFRS Foundation website, and you'll see a long list of companies that donate. So just to clarify, we are negotiating to move from the SEC to an international organization funded by corporations that want to change from a detailed rules-based accounting standard to a much shorter principles-based accounting standard that allows for a lot of interpretation. Now, I'm not really concerned that there's any kind of funny business going on here, because I think that everybody has good intentions. Uh, personally, I'd like to see the SEC uh, retain more control over the process. Um, the SEC has a lot of good people working for them, and their job is to watch our back. My real concern here is the impact on US growth. Because if the US is giving up their authority to set their own accounting standards, that limits our flexibility and our ability to grow and change those standards. So for example, imagine the US has a new growing industry, like the commercial space industry. So the US is going to be doing all this crazy stuff in space, like manufacturing in space. Well, <laughs> we're going to have to write new accounting standards. And if we've given up this control to an international organization, we're going to have to go ask permission before we can put those standards in place. And so for the US to give up this authority to set our own accounting standards limits US flexibility and US national interest. I hope that gave you a good overview of the difference between GAAP and IFRS. In general, most people agree that there's benefits to standardization of accounting around the world, and GAAP and IFRS are already very similar. But there does remain a few sticking points that will remain conversations for years to come. Now I want to hear from you. If you have any thoughts about GAP or IFRS, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. And if you found this video helpful, click on that subscribe button. The best way to supercharge a business is through accounting and corporate finance, and I release a new video every week. So come back and check out next week's video.